ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਦਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਤੇ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਐਂਡ ਅਪਡੇਟ ਔਨ ਦ ਕਰੰਟ ਸਿਚੁਏਸ਼ਨ ਇਨ ਇੰਡੀਆ ਐਂਡ ਪਾਕਿਸਤਾਨ ਐਂਡ ਦ ਕਰੰਟ ਪੋਲਿਟੀਕਲ ਸਿਚੁਏਸ਼ਨ ਵਿਚ ਹੈਜ਼ ਡਿਵੈਲਪਡ ਐਂਡ ਵੇਅਰ ਇਟਸ ਲੀਡਿੰਗ ਅਪ ਟੂ ਵਾਟ ਆਰ ਦ ਮੇਨ ਕੋਜ਼ਸ ਐਂਡ ਵਾਈ ਥਿਸ ਫਲੈਸ਼ ਪੁਆਇੰਟ ਬਿਟਵੀਨ ਇੰਡੀਆ ਐਂਡ ਪਾਕਿਸਤਾਨ ਹੈਜ਼ ਬਿਕਮ ਵਨ ਆਫ ਦ ਮੋਸਟ ਡੇਂਜਰਸ ਪੁਆਇੰਟਸ ਇਨ ਗਲੋਬਲ uh geopolitics at the moment to understand the entire situation uh, the prime suspect in this situation comes right back to narendra modi to understand the entire situation how this conflict and where it's going to and uh, the entire situation around the conflict we must understand the current leadership Uh, of india and its philosophy in general because we have to understand uh, the political uh, the political ping pong between india and pakistan has been going on for around 60 years it's always been there so but the escalation we are saying is seeing at the moment and to the degree of escalation we are saying and this at the speed which we are seeing them at and the rhetoric and the ideas and the utter fascism which is being spewed on uh, everywhere by the media especially on the indian side uh, it just all got to do with the philosophy of the current indian regime as far as india is concerned india has always followed regardless of a political party the fundamental policy political policy has been of hindutva regardless of a political party from day one but the entire scene change has happened since narendra modi has become the prime minister or has been phased in as the new prime minister if there is such a uh, if there is such a thing uh, to understand what uh, this ideology is you must understand the background of narendra modi narendra modi is a lifelong member of the rashtriya swayam sevak sangh and his political party bjp is merely a political arm of the sangh parivar or the rashtriya swayam sevak sangh now this this whole scenario must be understood we have a a political leader a prime minister of india one of the biggest armies in the world the guy who's in charge of their country that army comes from a political organization which follows the philosophy of elitism openly which wants to turn india into a theocracy a hindu theocracy where hinduism hindi language and only hindus are and the entire india changes from a political union of of, of india of 27 to 28 states to a hindu nation and now since narendra modi has been through, uh, been in charge his entire political focus has been on this idea of pushing the philosophy of hindutva and hindutva is fundamentally at the core the idea is of turning india from a political union of 28 states to a hindu state where all the languages there are many different languages in um, the entire union there are many different cultures in uh, the union there are many different uh, people and their cultures their languages their entire state to state variations are like for example you could go from one state of india to another which will look uh, like a different country altogether because the the language difference the food the culture the entire but when it comes to narendra modi and his organization they want to f- fundamentally change that they want to fundamentally change it to a degree that every single state in india follows their three h's hindi hindu and hindustan 
So Hindi would be implemented as the official language. Hinduism would be forced onto people as the official religion and Hindustan, it will turn from being a political union of India to a theocratical Hindu state. This is a fundamental political policy which the current leadership, the current regime of India is being following. So then we come to this idea which has caused a, a major uproar within the politics and that was the attack on the Indian military base by uh, uh, by Kashmiri uh, freedom fighters. Now Kashmiri agitation has been going on for 60 years and it's been going uh, through its phases of up and down and uh, there has been many attacks as such as this because the amount of atrocities uh, the Kashmir and the people of Kashmir are suffering regardless of who they are, either it be Sikhs in Kashmir, Muslims or Christians or whoever, the Indian regime, as I have said before, have a political policy of enforcing the three H's, Hindu, Hindi and Hindustan on them. They want a demographic change in Kashmir. And the current, what we're seeing, the current agitation, which has been nearly going on for three months, a curfew has been imposed in Kashmir for last three months. This is a ground reality. And uh, the government, the regime of India has been impunitively killing Kashmiris regardless in their, in their dozens, hundreds, shooting on unarmed uh, protesters, raping women, raping children, raping men. They have been raping, murdering, looting Kashmir openly in front of the global media and nobody has fledged it. This is the reality. And we see out of that aggression that the, uh, the people who are struggling have picked up arms and are struggling against the people who are oppressing them. And that resulted in 17 Indian uh, soldiers being killed by Kashmiri freedom fighters. Now, this agitation India's response to this legitimate agitation which is calling for democratic freedom and right for self-determination has been faced by an idealistic planned idealistic planned attack of changing the demographics of Kashmir and turning Kashmir to a Hindu state. That must be understood. And now what we are seeing, because this regime, the Narendra Modi regime, the RSS or BJP, whichever one you will like, regime have an agenda of turning India, uh, the union, into a theocracy. They are using this attack as a staging post for the turning of uh, the union into a theocratical state. They have, uh, for example, India's border with Pakistan stretches from all the way from Kashmir to all the way to Gujarat. Now, what have we seen? After Kashmir, Punjab has become the center of the conflict between these uh, in the current situation. Hundreds of villages in Punjab in India have been evacuated. The military have forced evacuated these uh, homes of uh, Sikhs in Punjab. Their crops have been, their houses have been looted by the Indian army. They have been forcefully removed. And what India, you have to understand this idea of targeting, singling out Punjab for this conflict, uh, conflict is deliberate because again, Punjab is another state within India, which is one of the most vocal opponents of this fascist ideology of Hindutva. And the Indian regime has been using the Kashmir conflict to not only attack Kashmir, but they are trying to hit two birds with one stone, using the Kashmir agitation as, as a tool to attack Punjab. They have already emptied out 
hundreds of villages uh, near the border between India and Pakistan. And the Sikhs, uh, the Sikhs from those villages have been forced out of their homes. What they want to create is they want to create that conflict and they want to turn Punjab into the land of war. Because this is the main opposition. Because you have to see, even when Narendra Modi got elected as a prime minister, Punjab was the only state in India which opposed fascism. These are the things which must be understood as to the nature of what the political ideology of these people are. And what we are seeing is now the regime itself is putting through their political ideology of implementing their theocracy through this current conflict. Now Punjab, Kashmir's conflict has been used to attack Punjab. Punjab has become the focal point and they want to turn Punjab into the land of war where they want to hold the current conflict. And we see, we see the degree of fascism which has grown in India. Now, as we have predicted before in many of our prior lectures and the talks we have given regarding Narendra Modi and his old fascist Ku Klux Klan is that when the entire fascist network of Narendra Modi, that would be the Sangh Parivar. The Sangh Parivar is a, a grouping of all the Hindu fundamentalist fascist organization. When it reaches a critical mass, by that I mean it will have become so huge in its membership that they will remove the state itself. That is a fundamental plan of the founder of the Sangh Parivar or the RSS, Gowalka. His ideology has always in to get into power with hook or crook and then to grow your membership to a degree that it will automatically replace the current status quo and the state and turn India into a theocracy state by state. Now what we have seen is we have seen mass recruitments for uh, Bajrang Dal, Shiv Sena, RSS, Durga Wani, all the Hindu extremists, terrorists, fascists, enemies of the human race organizations. And we have seen a recruitment of these to a degree that Hindu fanaticism has gone wild throughout the Union. Hindu fanaticism and the Hindu fascists have been lynching each and every single minority as they wish throughout the Union. And this current conflict has given them a, a, an opportunity to implement some of their ideology. But it has also brought a problem to the Narendra Modi regime as well. The idea is the growth of these fascist groups is going through such a speed that to a degree even Narendra Modi and his regime are not in complete overall hands-on. They are in control of theocracy and hand, uh, hands-on control at the top but fascism is grown to a degree that India was forced to do this media drama of surgical strikes against Pakistan. This is this shows you to uh, to a direction to what uh, the Indian Union is heading towards, and Narendra Modi has become one of the most world's most dangerous and evil and one of the most fascist and a threat to human civilization at large today in global politics. This guy has to be taken noticed of before he unleashes because at the current point he is the 
biggest threat to human civilization at large because the fascist agenda and the fascist organizations and his entire Ku Klux Klan of the entire fascist groups, they don't only have an agenda which is limited to India, or oh, they truly have a global agenda. They dream of a Vishwa Hindu Rashtra, where their Aryan Hindu fascist philosophy dominates the globe. Now, for therefore, Narendra Modi must be understood by the entire global population and the international community as to the threat he represents to humanity at large. He is a, he is a fascist with an arsenal of nuclear weapons, a countless army within the Indian army and a goon squad. Let's be frank to the number. RSS, the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh, which he was a member of, they have 10 million armed recruits throughout India, and that's just one of the Hindu fascist organization. You have to get in there Shiv Sena, Bajrang Dal, Durga Vahani, then the list goes on and on and on. Now, this fascism is growing throughout India and it has to be taken seriously and this is the main cause of the conflict which we are seeing today this is the main cause of the conflict which we are seeing today and the threat it is beginning to pose not only to the region but to the whole world therefore the international community must wake up because when Narendra Modi and his fascist goons are plundering the entire Indian Union and claiming that they're going to take over the world and turn the entire world into a Hindu theocracy, these fascists must be taken seriously as to the threat they represent and they pose. The government of China, the government of Russia, the government of Iran, the entire Asian subcontinent has spoken up against, uh, against Modi as to his actions and as to his ideology. And the world, the Western media and the Western civilization and in general the global society must take the threat which uh, Narendra Modi is posing much more seriously than it is because if this fascist is not stopped, he represents a threat not only to that region but to the entire world. Wahiguruji ka khalsa. Wahiguruji ki fateh.